Hello everyone, Khalil Azgarali here once again from Washington DC Table Tennis and we are here to bring you the newest product review that everyone's been talking about. So in table tennis there has not been that much um, vast innovation in technology in equipment in the last 30 or 40 years. Rubber has improved quite a bit in the sponge and top sheet technology but blades have remained more or less the same with the exception of the innovations in carbon and synthetic fiber technology. However, the material changes have not been that drastic between the 80s and now with the Tamka Carbon Series from Butterfly coming to the ZLC and the synthetic RL8 fibers. Now it's not that big of a difference. Everyone has been noticing the newest blade from Stiga, which is the Cyber Shape. The Cyber Shape has a drastically different blade and head size and shape. So the theory behind it is that it gives you 11% more surface area to hit, which transfers into about 5% larger sweet spot or so that it's been advertised. So we'll see it for ourselves and we'll let you know. So today we're here to unbox the Stiga Cyber Shape. So a little bit of background on this. This is the newest innovation from Stiga. It was used by Jules Morgard who only played with it for two weeks leading up to the World Championship. And he ended up reaching the finals of the World Championship. So this was quite a great feat and it's amazing that he was able to do this with this new racket with such an innovative shape. So we're here to check it out and see what we think about the actual product. Also, we'll be testing the racket with the Stiga DNA Platinum H, which means hard rubber. It's 52.5 degree sponge, which is made for, I would say all out attackers because it's a very hard, fast sponge. And this is the actual setup that was used by Trolls Morgard in the world championship. Stiga sent this racket, this blade with two uh, over grip, I guess, so grip wraps for a more comfortable handle if that's what some people would like. Um, it was very hard to get this blade, by the way, so I, I did this for you guys. Uh, we had to import it from Europe, which took quite a bit of doing because it's not available on the US market yet. So we'll probably be the first review in the United States. So let's unbox. So as you can see down here, it says patent pending because it's their uh, intellectual property, the, the cyber shape. Um, it's a pretty cool box, by the way. So you can see it has like a nice color. It looks, looks almost like an oil slick. And here we have the blade. It has a really cool little pendant here. The emblem changes color from purple from purple to blue, depending on how the light hits it. And the bottom has an enamel tag, which is usually a sticker with, that Stiga usually uses, the sticker emblem, but it's their classic, you know, crown design with a little bit of innovation to it because the crown is a little bit more, um, I guess, high tech view um, image. And so you can see the, the shape. Handle's pretty small and comfortable for my hand. Um, all of the edges are pretty beveled, so it's it's a nice, comfortable grip. Um, also, you can see the shape, how it starts off narrow. So it has 2% less surface area at the bottom, which is where you wouldn't really um, hit with. And up top, it has 11% more uh, surface area, which leads to a 5% larger sweet spot. We will try it out and see what we come up with and how we like it. So we're look for, looking forward to trying this this week and getting back to you guys. With the round rocket, it's easier um, to hide it because you don't know which, you just see something round. Mm -hmm. But this one, you can look at one edge mm -hmm. and you see if they're going down or up. Mm -hmm. So.
for your matches where you do this, do you get close-up shots as well? Okay. Now we're going to be talking a little bit about the test of the cyber shape and what my personal thoughts on the blade are. Um, so overall, uh, if I didn't look at the racket and notice that the shape was different, it just feels like a normal blade. Uh, it's a very good blade, good feeling, uh, not too fast, it gives you a lot of control but it has more than enough speed on the high end. It plays, in my opinion, very similar to the Ma Long 5 blade in that it's softer feel. Uh, it could also be due to the rubber. The rubber seemed pretty soft, uh, the Stiga DNA rubber. Um, I felt that it was fast enough on the high end, but it gave you good feeling on the slower, on the lower end. So if you try to make slower touch shots, then it gives you more control. But when you need that extra uh, power, because the carbon is a few layers in, so there's it's more of a wood feel on the outside, but when you engage the carbon, you do feel that extra speed. So on the higher end, it does give you that power when you need it, um, but it's not overly fast. I felt like the shape really didn't change much uh, for me. 
the only time I really felt maybe a, a little bit of head heaviness is on the end of the backhand. So when I'm backhand looping, backhand hit, or on the end of the banana flip, you feel a little bit extra weight in the front end. Uh, but other than that, it was quite comfortable to play with. Um, so on the forehand drive and backhand drive, it just feels very normal, good large sweet spot. It was easy to center the ball and get good feeling. The sound wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I thought, because when I watch some of the other videos, maybe it's the way that the players hit the ball or the acoustics of where they were playing. The sound was very abrupt and uh, it did. It, sound, it sounded almost like you were mishitting the ball or like, like it was a mishit. But when I actually played with it, it didn't feel or sound like that at all. I was able to middle the ball well, get good contact. It was great. Um, on drives, it was very good. When, when I smashed, I felt like there was a big sweet spot. I could hit the ball in the center of the racket. Uh, I didn't hit the edge of the racket much. I thought that maybe that might be a thing where you know I wouldn't be able to middle the ball properly, but it was fine. On the pushes, short and long, I felt like I could get good contact. Maybe because of the shape, how it's more angular, I could get a little bit more spin on the, on the faster, deeper pushes uh, and also on the serves but I think it's just a marginal thing and it could be just mental. Uh, I also felt like on the loops, it was very, the ball, I had good dwell time, good throw, uh, good power on the counter loops. I could feel the ball and control it and I felt like I got enough, enough power off the table. Uh, I think that it's more for a mid distance player. Um, it's a little bit heavy for very close to the table and it's not so powerful far away from the table. So I think mid distance will be um, the best way to use that racket. On short returns, I felt very comfortable touching the ball short, getting good spin. Uh, I really liked it for banana flip. I felt like the extra momentum on the end of the stroke helped me. I felt very consistent and stable on the banana flip. So I really liked it for banana flip and also for backhand loop. I felt like it was very good for backhand loop. So those so players that like to banana flip to open and play very strong backhand loop from mid distance, I think that it would be a good blade for them. Uh, overall, I liked it. it. Not much of a difference as I thought. Uh, one thing that I haven't seen anyone else say that may factor in is that not when I was using it, but when I was playing when Martin was using it and I was looking at the way he was coming into the ball, I felt like I could read his serves a little bit better because I could follow one of the angles and trace a line on his contact. When you have a rounder blade, it's harder to follow that angle of entry and the contact. I felt with the more angular blade, I could follow the angle of entry and the contact a little bit better. So I was able to read serves a little bit better, especially for example, like the hook serve and also on certain plays. So for chop blocks, it's easier to see if it's a chop block with side under and side top because you can follow one of those edges. But also it's just marginal. So these things aren't, um, I don't think that it was this great breakthrough in table tennis that uh, I think some people had hoped or touted it to be. Uh, I think that it is a good blade. I would recommend it. It's probably my favorite Stiga blade so far that I've tried, uh, more because of the feeling than the shape. It has very good feeling, very good control, good speed. Um, and once again, very similar to uh, other carbon blades where the carbon layer is a little bit deeper in. So you get more of that wood feel with enough uh, soft carbon power on the, on the harder plays. So overall, a good blade. I would recommend trying it when it's on the US market. Give it a try and let me know what you guys think. So those are my opinions, but we are very curious to see what your opinions are. So please leave a comment below. And let us know what you think. And if you have any other questions, we'd be happy to answer them. So once again, Khalil Asgarali at the Washington DC Table Tennis Center. Thank you very much.